music. And he just happened to choose my favorite song of all time, just, just randomly, which is hilarious. Um, so this is Movie Maker Magazine. I don't know how many of you folks are familiar with it, hopefully. Hopefully, raise your hands. Three quarters of the room, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Are you guys independent filmmakers or do you want to be feature filmmakers? What's, what's, okay, so let me, let me back up. Um, what we usually do at these kind of presentations uh, is explain what Movie Maker Production Services is. And then we take questions and the talk about how the service could work for your project. So we'll tell you a little bit, we'll do a little intro and then let's do it that way because I think that's the most useful way to uh, use our time is to be able to talk about how we can tailor the project, to tailor the program to your project. So um, Movie Maker Magazine was founded in 1993 in Seattle and I moved it to uh, Los Angeles few years later. Um, and I had just gotten out of film school in the early 90s and wanted to make feature films. Um, and of course, uh, you know, I was no different than anyone else, didn't have enough money to make a feature film. And back in those days, it was even more expensive, a lot more expensive to make a film because you had to use film <laughs> and to process your your movie, um, lots, lots of expenses that you don't have to deal with today. So my little tiny one location film that I shot in Seattle, uh, I had written the script, uh, basically, you know, it was kind of like my dinner with Andre, except set in a bar. It's like two guys talking, two guys in their early thirties talking about where they came from, where they're going to go the rest of their lives. It's called men in scoring position. And, um, I budgeted it out at uh, $350,000. That was about the cheapest I could do it for and didn't have $350,000. So I was inspired by um, Robert Rodriguez and folks like that who took what they had and made their movie, wrote their script around it, you know, and were able to get the resources that they had at their fingertips. I think El, El Mariachi, uh, involved a, a guitar case and a, a bus and a, a couple locations in Mexico. And these were all things that Robert Rodriguez had access to. So he was able to make a very entertaining little movie and sell it for a lot of money. So it was inspiring to me. I had friends who owned a bar in Seattle. Um, but what I had most of all was this little magazine that I started. And um, I just started calling uh, vendors like Kodak and Panavision. And I said, hey, you know, is there any way I could use your stuff, <laughs> like your, your really, really expensive Panavision camera um, for 10 days um, for free? You know, if, if I give you an ad in the magazine or if I write up an article in the magazine. And I was shocked that everyone said yes. So, um, we had had national distribution by that time. We had gotten Oliver Stone on our cover. And so, and we, you know, back in the day when people were actually reading magazines and were excited about magazines, and, you know, we, we were coming out 10, 10 12 times a year. Um, I'm very proud, by the way, that Sam is, is, is recently with Movie Maker, but I'm very proud that this continues to exist. It's still a quarterly, it's still in print, you can still read it on the toilet, you know, with, you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's great that it's still, you know, a physical thing. But so anyway, we got distribution, national distribution, because we did, we had Woody Allen and Oliver Stone and Jodie Foster and a few other um, folks who graciously said that they would let us interview them. And uh, that was, that was enough to allow us to convince Kodak and Panavision, Todd A.O., do you guys remember Todd A.O., where Steven Spielberg posted all his movies? I'm sure you remember, Blake, Todd A.O., yeah. Um, so I was able to use all these amazing facilities by bartering with them. So I bartered for editorial, I bartered for advertising, and was able to barter, uh, you can't, we couldn't do it all through barter because people still need to get paid 
you know, we couldn't, you know, if a cinematographer wanted to work for us, he needs to feed his family. He, he wouldn't take, you know, barter necessarily, although we've done that since on several occasions because occasionally you get a crew member who's like, you know, you don't have to pay me cash. What I really want is a, a hotel room at the Halakalani in Waikiki for a week. Can you get that for me, for me and my family? Because it's $450 a night. Can you guys all hear me? Um, and so that's what we call a three-way barter. It wasn't, we weren't bartering directly with the person whose services we got. We were bartering with another organization and using that in order to satisfy the, the, the salary of the crew member. But, but generally that's, that's kind of an outlier. Generally um, it's organizations that, it's, it's companies. Um, uh, and we can barter with those folks directly. The ones we can't barter with, you know, necessarily because there's no profit in it are um, craft services companies. You know, there's no profit in that. Uh, insurance, airline tickets, those are all hard ones for us. But virtually anything else, um, movie maker production services can, can work a deal out with and take the profit out of those prices and pass the savings along to the filmmaker. So we, it's, it's called a budget extension service. So um, I was able to get my movie made. We got a distribution, uh, international distribution for it. And uh, people came to me, uh, friends of mine uh, who are making features over the years. We did several others. Um, and then um, maybe seven or eight years ago, we opened it up to the public and uh, we started advertising movie maker production services. And um, we've done dozens of movies uh, since that time. So right now it operates kind of like a film festival. You go to uh, filmfreeway.com, we work with Film Freeway. And you uh, tell us about, you enter it, you, know, you enter it like you would a film festival. And you just uh, write up a, a director statement. If you're a producer, you can enter it as a producer or director and uh, just explain what your vision is, what your budget is. And then we, um, we vet all the uh, entrance, entries um, at the end of the period. What does it usually go? Six, eight weeks? Yeah. Something like that. And then um, call up the uh, folks who we think we can work best with and uh, folks we believe would, will actually reach the finish line with their, with their movie. And we decide, uh, we have a conversation with them. We see if, if we can help them. What do they need? You know, some folks say, you know, I don't need a camera. Uh, you know, I don't need a grip and lighting package. I have a brother-in-law who owns a camera house, so I'm good there, you know, and I have a certain amount of cash to pay. The, what I really need is um, post-production. Do you know any, you know, can you work with a post house? Um, or I need PR, you know, a lot of movie makers, as you know, I'm sure don't think about that as they're going into their, their pre-production period, they, they have just enough money to get it in the can, as we used to say, and that's it. They ran out of money. And, you know, and of course, if, if you can't publicize your movie, you might as well have not made your movie. So Movie Maker you know, is really good at publicity. That's what we do. We work with PR professionals in New York and Los Angeles and elsewhere. And we can, like anything else that we, work, we do, we can get uh, our producers 50% off of the of the cost that they would normally have to charge if they were, you know, dialing uh, up, you know, cold calling PR folks, if you could even get them on the phone, if you could even get them to work with you. Usually they're too busy, you know, they're, you can't get them when you, you know, when you have a premiere for your feature, um, you know, you're, you're then under the gun, you have a premiere a few weeks away, you need to get a PR professional. Movie maker can do that for you, whereas you might have a tough time on your own. So all those areas um, we can help with. And so the program works like this. It used to be before COVID in the old days, it was a $25,000 minimum. Um, now it's $10,000. But whatever you, amount you put in, as long as we can match it, we, we take in uh, $250,000 a year. We match that in, in barter. So the, the, the company is on the hook for double that each year in, um, in advertising and editorial and all these deals that we make with these companies. So we have to limit it because obviously the whole 
company can't be full of, you know, of just barter deals, you know? So um, it's an investment on the producer's part. They put in an amount of cash between 10,000 and like I said, whatever we have available uh, for 2022, I think there's a little over $150,000 left uh, to, to match. So um, anywhere in that range, and then and then we double it in vendor, um, and, and double it in value. So the and, and we base that on vendor rate card rates. The the phantom brother-in-law I was talking about a little while ago. If you have a you know back pocket deal with a company and you're already getting 25% off, you know we're not going to promise you 50% off that 25%. We're going to promise you 50% off what they would charge from their rate card. So a lot of times filmmakers come to us and say, yeah, we, we're getting 10% off anyway, right off the bat. You know, and I, and I always say, if you're getting any amount off anyway, keep that deal to yourself and work with Movie Maker Production Services on with, with vendors where you're not getting those deals, those uh, sweetheart deals. So where you're paying retail, work with us uh, on those deals. So. If you're paying retail, um, Sam has, has worked some great deals out recently with uh, hotels across the country. We worked in Northern Florida recently, New York, of course, Los Angeles. Um, a lot of uh, filmmakers, you need lodging, you know, you, unless you're shooting in your house, you need lodging. So you can call up hotels and sometimes they'll give you 10% off, yeah. but they're not gonna give you 50% off unless you're working with Movie Maker, probably. So that's kind of the program in a nutshell. Um, it's called a budget extension service, and that's exactly what we do. We, we're able to, uh, to, you come to us with a budget of, you know, your, your project is, usually it's between 100,000 and $500,000. So really low budget, uh, or back in the day, that was considered low budget. <laughs> and nowadays, 500,000 is considered a really healthy budget. Um, I just saw Card Counter last night, Paul Schrader's new movie, and uh, that looked like it was, you know, kind of a not expensive budget, um, but it was it, 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 healthy budget for nowadays. For I think they didn't use um, Willem Dafoe because he was too expensive. They, they they underused him. He was only in a couple scenes. Does anyone have any questions? Is this is this? Uh, do you kind of understand what the program is all about? Anybody have any questions about how it could work for you? Yes. You can take your mask off. I'm not going to. One moment. We'll be over with the mic as well so everyone can hear your fantastic questions. All right. Yeah, we'll pass the mic around. Make sure you cough on the mic. <laughs> right after I told him to take his mask, mask off. Cough on it. Hi. Uh, Hi. Yeah, two questions, if I understand it right. Yes. So the producers have to put in some money, like at least 10000 right? Yes. All right, cool. Yeah. Number, is there any lower number on the budget? Like what if your budget is less than 100000 for a short? Would you consider a short film? We do shorts. We do um, feature narrative features. We do documentaries. We do we do all the Usually, um, it's it's narrative features. Narrative. It's kind of our, yeah. Usually. But we have, we, we have worked with short Alex and uh, yeah. so we just did a short film. So if your budget is like a 20,000, 30,000, is that a possibility? We often get filmmakers coming to us and say, um, so I've raised $50,000 and you can, you can double it. So we're going to give you $50,000. And we and I always say, no, 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 don't, don't do that. You're going to need, you're going to need a lot of cash for things that we cannot help you with. You know, so, you know, if you have 50,000, usually the sweet spot for us is like 20% of your budget. You know, if you can devote 20%, 25% of your budget to movie maker production services. So if my total budget is 50,000, then I- 10,000, 10, yeah, 10, would be- Would yeah. you work with 10,000? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool, yeah. all right. Yeah. How about the animation film, which would require mostly post-production? Mm -hmm. Yeah, animation is something that we, yeah. Post, cool. is, post is one of our sweet spots, as I always say. All right, Yeah. thank you. We just worked with um, Tunnel Post right here in Santa Monica, and they saved uh, a filmmaker of ours $40,000 Nice. Because we worked a deal out with them. What if you're already working on a film and you have money for producing it? Like like principal photography, but you still need to do PR. You can come to us at any, any time. Stage? You can come to us at any stage. Okay. We generally like to start working with 
um, producers or directors in, in pre-production right, cool. or, 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 or even before that. Um, we have producers that have come into the program years ago and haven't pulled the trigger yet. We always say you have three years to, 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 to exercise your, your value with us, three nice. years. So that, I think that's a generous amount of time. If you can't get it together within three years, come to us. We've never had a producer lose, you know, their invest their whole investment. They, you come to us and, and uh, we can roll that over into a new project, maybe continue with your project. We're here just to help filmmakers. That's why we do this. We're not here to um, make life difficult for anyone. So um, sometimes, uh, like I said, we've been doing this for a number of years now, and sometimes filmmakers will come to us at the end of three years and say, you know what, I, I just, I can't get it together. And, and, and by the way, I'm not making movies anymore. You know, can you sell my credit to somebody else? And we've been able to do that also. There's usually, a, you have to take a little bit of a haircut on that, but yeah. we've been able to do that as well, so. Well, thank you very much. Yep, thanks. And did we have a question over here first? And then actually, if you guys don't mind keeping the mask on, that'd be fantastic, just so we can avoid okay, don't passing listen to me. off Keep the mask. On. I'll yeah. go ahead and hold it for you. Thank you. I don't mind keeping the mask on. Hi, my name is TJ DeRosa. How y'all doing? Hi, TJ. Uh, I have a quick question about, um, as far as uh, different projects, I do have some things in the works right now. And I was wondering, I threw your process the way I'm understanding is you go through film freeway. I. I I mean, let me let me interject. You don't have to go to Film Freeway. We have we we accept entry entries uh, throughout the year. Um, if you reach out to Sam or myself or someone else at Movie Maker, we can. You know, you don't have to. If 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 there's no campaign running, no Film Freeway campaign running, you can always inquire if, about whether or not there's availability left in the program for the time period that you want to. I mean, if you if you come in now and you're shooting in 2023. You know, you can put in as much as you want. You can put it in up to uh, one hundred and fifty thousand dollars is the limit. So you can do between ten and one hundred and fifty for twenty twenty three. So that's sorry. Go ahead. Finish your question. That was essentially my question. Thank you so much for answering that. And basically, my final <coughs> excuse me, my final question is: um, uh, Do you guys, in terms of the services, do you guys provide some help with uh, tax credits, permits? Uh, can I, I don't understand the full spectrum sure. of the service, and I was wondering if you could clarify. Thank you guys so much. Sure. Um, we do locations. Um, tax credits, we haven't worked with any states on, uh, directly on tax credit uh, savings, no. Um, which is not to say we couldn't. We like to be innovative and, and help you where you need the help. Um, but uh, no, someone came to us the other day and said, we really need you to get us lodging, but we need you to work with Airbnb because we, we, you know, we wanna go to hotels, we wanna go to individual places. And we have never worked with Airbnb before, but I think, did you reach out to them yet? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> I, think that's, I think the plan is to reach out to them and see if we can work something out with Airbnb. So we were happy to be innovative. Um, and that's the other thing about the program is we, if you come into the program, you don't have to know when you come in, how you want your value allocated. You just have to know that you'll be able to use at least double the amount you put in. So if you put in $25,000, you have to know in your head that you're gonna have at least $50,000 that you, know, you wanna earmark toward having Movie Maker help you. Um, and when we have our initial phone call, which always, should be six, it's not always, but it, we ask that it's at least six weeks prior to the start of principal photography, because it takes Sam and Caleb and myself uh, a little while to work these deals out. You know, We're generally successful with about 50% of the vendors that we call, um, if it's within our wheelhouse. So you know, when we have that initial call and you say, okay, here, here's my hierarchy of needs, I need camera, grip and lighting, I, I need, you know, post-production and I need PR and I need lodging and I need uh, cars, vehicles, you know, and I need porta potties You know, if that's your, <laughs> that's your list, um, we'll go through with you in our initial call and say, okay, you know, you're shooting in Orlando. Okay, you know, we can do that, that, that. Um, and then we go ahead and go to work. And during the, the 
during the, you know, where the rubber meets the road, you know, making these uh, deals happen, you of course always have the final word. You, you don't have to work with one of our vendors. You don't have to work with any deals that we find for you. You're always in the driver's seat with Movie Maker Production Services. But um, if there's if there's some uh, situation where um, we're not able to get your, you know, your, your number one hierarchy, your, your number one need and your hierarchy of needs, we'll go to the second one in the third one and we'll, we'll build in your value somewhere on your list, you know, so you'll be able to, so it, we double your money, which is fantastic for it's unheard of. There's no other company in the world that's going to do that for you, but you have to be flexible. We may not be able to get you post-production facility in Nashville on the dates you need, you know, so we'll work with anybody in North America, uh, any city in North America. But again, if we can't get your post-production facility in Nashville that you really wanted, maybe you're going to have to take that out in lodging and PR. You know, we'll have to build that $50,000 value in somewhere else on your budget. That makes sense? Anybody else have a question? Yes, sir. I'm just going to hold on to the mic as well so we don't have to hand it off for safety reasons. Okay, cool. Hello, my name is Brandon Palmore. My friends call me BP. Um, DP, I have a question. DP, like, BP, like the oil company. That's, that's convenient. BP, yeah. Are you a DP? I am. That's very cool. Ain't it BP to DP? That's something special, isn't it? Yeah, but I do have a question in regards to the entirety of the program. Yeah. Um, as somebody that is emerging into this community, into this work, um, fundraising is always the issue, right? So does Movie Maker have programs or resources that help out with early filmmaking development um, or having some way of helping with the fundraising aspect or do they have to come to you once the funds are already raised? Um, so we always say when you come to Movie Maker, there's a lot we can do for you that's not on the page. You know, it's not, when you go to the Movie Maker Production Services homepage, it's not gonna say, uh, call the guys at Movie Maker and maybe they can direct you to a producer who can help you. It's not gonna say that. Um, that's not what the program is. But there's a lot of ancillary ways we can, we can help. Um, we're, you know, again, we're here to help producers. That's what we're, that's our reason for existing. So if we can direct you to someone who can help, we will try to do that. But yeah, you can't enter the program officially unless you have the, the ability to work into the program, which is which involves an investment. Yeah. So um, once you're in the program, again, um, we're in your corner. You know, when you when it comes time, you know, you, you're done with your, you know, you've wrapped your, your, your film, you've done your post, um, your time, it's time to enter film festivals. And you know you're a producer, and you call us up and say, "I'm done. Um, which festivals should I enter? You know, do you have any connections to those festivals? We can't promise you that you're going to be able to premiere at X Y Z festival, but it doesn't hurt you to to say you're with you know you you've, you've been in this program. I always like to brag about um, Cinequest 2020 just before the pandemic hit. Actually, I was at Cinequest 2020, March 2020. And uh, two of our movie maker production services producers got in opening night. They premiered opening night at Cinequest in San Jose, which is amazing. That's a great festival. And it's great in a number of ways. One way is because there's, there's media that comes up from Los Angeles to that festival. That festival's been around for 30 years, I think. So we got two of our producers in opening night. We didn't get them in, sorry. But they got in, and I don't think it hurt that the festival does business with us, and these guys said that they're with Movie Maker. So anyway, they both got chosen for opening night. Um, the festival had to close halfway through the two weeks. It's usually a two-week festival. Because of COVID, they had to cancel after one week. So thank God they got their premiere in opening night, or they wouldn't have shown their movies at all. And both those films went on to get international distribution shortly after. And that was, you know, it was a kind of a tough year last year to get distribution. So I think we helped them tremendously. And, and again, um, 
these are ancillary areas. I, we can't promise these things, but I think that when you're in the program, it helps you. So. And should we speak to the fact that we're not only working with filmmakers individually, but also with film festivals as well? You know, yeah, I mean, Movie of... Maker, is this one of the... So we have a couple, uh, maybe uh, five kind of anchor stories. You know, you know, at the mall, there's the anchor store. You know, there's a few anchor feature articles in Movie Maker every year. This, this one is one of them, this issue, this new issue with Felicity Jones has one of our anchor stories, the best film schools in the US and Canada. Um, another, two, two other ones are coolest film festivals in North America. And the other, another one is uh, uh, best places, uh, 20, I think it is, 20 best places to live in North America, if you're if you're a working movie maker, so the fact that we do oh, and then uh, festivals worth the entry fee, I think that's what Sam is talking about. The coolest festivals and festivals worth the entry fee. So festivals like to be on those lists. It has put festivals on the map. The New Orleans Film Festival was a tiny little festival, and once we listed them as one of the film festivals worth the entry fee, they became a very prominent festival. Um, because they use these articles to their advantage and they are able to parlay them into uh, much more better exposure. So they had like 200 entries before that. They went up to thousands of entries the following year. Same thing with um, Mammoth Lakes. Shira Dubrovnik runs that festival. She said the same thing. Mammoth Lakes International Film Festival would not even exist still without Movie Maker. Um, so to answer your question, yeah, it helps that we work directly with, with festivals. They, they like to help us out, we help them out. You know how this business is, everybody, you know, it's a people business and um, you have to know someone in order to advance yourself. It's, it's no different with film festivals. They need to know someone in the media in order to have their festival rise above the other 6,000 festivals in the world, you know? So if we can say they're the top 25 festival, one of the top 25 festivals in Movie Maker, which gets international distribution. What's the current um, numbers numbers on uh, the website, moviemaker.com? Do how many unique visitors are we getting? I, had, I wish I could pull that number out of my head, but there was it's like around three million, isn't it? Yeah, and we have you know uh, the, the the dedicated newsletter we send out goes to 40k subscribers. I mean, when we're when we're talking, that's to, weekly, forty thousand. Yeah. And this is this is a dedicated list. It's not some bullshit list. This goes to forty thousand filmmakers. So that's why we have you know advertisers on the newsletter because they know that it's a it's a list that performs for them. So um, where where are we going with this? Yeah, it helps. Yes, it helps. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is uh, for the Movie Maker magazine, what's your quarterly circulation, Florence? And um, also, is that a part of the package? If we were to give you money, is that included? Or like interviews with the stars? Or Yeah, so to answer your first question, I, I haven't been the publisher for the last two years. There's been a new publisher that came along, and that's uh, Deirdre McCarrick, uh, and, and um, she's a new publisher. So I still obviously work with my baby, this is, you know, I founded it. I still love Movie Maker. I still work these guys. But uh, the circulation when I left was almost 50,000. And we used to say 150,000 because in the industry, you're allowed to triple it because of pass along copies. You know, if this is, you know, at a, um, a post house on the shelf, you know, more than one person will come along and look at it. You know, so we call it pass along copy so three times so when i left it was uh between 40 and 50,000 triple that you know 120,000 150,000 um and your second part of your question is do you get an article in the magazine if you come into movie production movie maker production services the answer is yes but uh we can't promise that it's going to be in print it may be on it may be in moviemaker.com you know the website which actually is better because you get way more eyeballs there than you, than you do in print. Print is still prestigious. People still want to be in print. They can show it to their mom who doesn't, who's not on the internet. You know, my mom's not on the internet. 
My mom is, kind of pisses me off. She's never been on the internet, but she's 80 years old. So bring it there. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's a limited number of pages can be, you know, editorial pages. There's, it's about 40% is editorial. The rest is our partners, advertisers. So there's a limited amount of space. And, and uh, Tim Malloy, the new editor, Sam works directly with Tim. He makes those decisions. Um, it's very confusing because I'm Tim Rice. There's another Tim that took over and is editor. So very, very confusing for people. But so Tim Malloy would decide where it's going to go, your article. Um, but yeah, if you come into the program, even at the minimum amount, you get editorial in the magazine, which you can use for your clip file, which will help you get into festivals and all that sort of stuff. And as you can imagine, with the sort of complexities that come with offering editorial and advertising uh, to uh, film festivals and the exchange that happens there with uh, production houses and vendors and stuff, uh, the layout of the print magazine comes with a lot of complications. So that's why it's, it, that's one of those things that you just, we, we don't want to guarantee you. A there, there's there's a big lead time. I think yeah. one of the things you're talking about, sure. there's a, you know, so the, the lead time is like months, mm -hmm. you know, if, in print, but it can be almost overnight online. So we're much more flexible with the, yeah. the online resource. Well, during that initial phone call that we was, I was telling you about, we, we discussed that with you. So we look at your budget and we talk to you and we together identify the places movie maker can help you most. Where do you need the help and where can we help you? You know, if you, if you come to us and say, you know, I, I'm flying a lot of people in from Europe and I really need you to, to, to work with me on, on reducing these airfares, you know, we'll be like, I'm sorry, you know, we can't, we don't do that. We can't help you with that. You know, it's just, it's just we've never had any luck with airlines. <laughs> just, there's no profit. Um, but if you come to us saying, you know, we need camera grip and lighting, we need post-production, we need PR, we need lodging, we need, you know, all those areas of your budget, you know, other than like five or six items, we can help you with almost everything else. So, uh, but together we'll look at the hierarchy. You know, you, you, filmmakers say to us, here's what I want you to focus on most. We just had a filmmaker last week who said, I'm shooting film. And I know that you've worked with Kodak and Panavision before. I want you to get them for me. So um, we were able to get them, I mean, I hope Kodak's not here. We're, we're this close to getting them Kodak, the Kodak deal. Um, but I don't think we're going to get them Panavision. So Panavision is not, you know, we can't promise these things until we talk to the vendors. Um, so I think we're going to save them $20,000 on their film stock, which is not bad, you know, so. That's not part of what we do. We do have relationships with those folks. We, we, it doesn't, again, they know who we are. It doesn't hurt to say that you you're, have been associated with this program, but no, we're not going to call up, you know, a distributor and pitch them, pitch your movie to them for you. It's not part of what we do, but the PR people that we work with do have those direct relationships and can do that for you. It's, it's kind of a conflict for us. We're not gonna, you know, we're not gonna get into the distribution um, directly, but we'll help you uh, and, we'll, and we'll work with the PR folks who can help you do that. Anybody else? I think. Back left there. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, we got. <laughs> you can you can wait. You can use the the mic. It's, it probably will help everybody. I've saved a little seed money. Yes. Uh, for a project, but rather than spend it on whining and dining people that are going to reject me, I wanted to do uh, the first ten minutes of the movie, and uh, it's hard getting that going. Uh, but while this sounds attractive to actually do the whole project question has to come up of who owns what and 
how do the ha ha profits get divided? <laughs> um, yeah, it's too bad, but Movie Maker takes complete possession of your film after we, after we, uh, no, Movie Maker has nothing to do with, with ownership of your film. We, we don't even require that you give us a thank you. In the, we ask for a thank you in the credits. And if you put in $50,000 or more, we ask that you make Movie Maker a producer on your film. And, but again, this is nothing that we require. It's not, we just think we're doing so much work, we feel like producers, you know, at that level. Um, but it's nothing that we require. You said you're, you were considering shooting 10 minutes as a, as a sales tool to help you raise the rest of it. Is why, why would you do that? Why would you shoot that? You think it's helping, you're gonna help you raise the rest of the money? There's part of that. Um, I, 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 been, I'm old school. I like to see something in my hand and say I've got something rather than be just dreaming about it. I, I think you have to take a leap in this business, you know, and I think you're wasting, squandering precious resources by doing that. This is my own opinion. I have filmmakers who do, who do shorts and shoot the short and they want that to be a proof of, of uh, concept for their much more expensive feature. And that does occasionally work for them, for filmmakers, but you put so much time and money and resources and you know, you're, you're calling in so many favors, even for the smallest project that I really discourage filmmakers from doing that. I, I think you should be putting all your resources into the thing that's gonna possibly, you laughed you know, about the profit thing, but you know, if you make a feature, you have a chance at a profit. In my little tiny movie, you know, back in 1999, made a profit, you know? Uh, a lot of our feature films make a profit. You make a short film, chances are you're, you're throwing that money away. I understand this. Uh, that's why I'm thinking like the cashback model where they, you know, they shot a thing that was going to actually be used in the final feature. Oh, that's different. So you yeah, go in with the idea that, okay, I've got 10%, 20% of the movie, and this is how much I cost to make it. This is how much the whole rest of the feature is gonna be, and I'm already saving you this 20% if you sign the deal. That's interesting, yeah, absolutely. That's a whole different ball game. If you're actually shooting part of the movie as you're short, yeah, that's very interesting. I, I think that, that, could, that could help. The part where you wanna get caliber talent that would be e equal for your feature, but that's harder to get at that level. Well, that's the other thing is you, 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 <laughs> the talent that you get, if you get anybody who, anybody who's in um, SAG, for instance, they have projects lined up. So they're going to devote their three days to you. You know, you shoot that part of the movie, but you're not shooting the whole movie. You, the chances of getting them back onto set six months later are so slim, you know. Good luck if you can do that. Maybe they're a friend of yours, but you know, it's very, very difficult to get people talent levels. I mean, trust me, we, we've, we've tried, you know, and we, we do work with SAG actors, known SAG actors, but it's very difficult to nail them down at all. You have to work with your reps. You have to guarantee them, you know, pay or play money. Um, so if you can get them, shoot, shoot all, your scene, all their scenes, you know, that's what I would suggest. Shoot all their scenes yeah, as part of that short. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks. Anybody else? Did you have a question? Hey, Kels. The, the new, new film company? A new film, a new enterprise. I thought you said a nude film company. I said, we, <laughs> we, don't, we don't do those at Movie Maker. Let me get usually. the mic, a new enterprise, a okay. GOE movie. All right. Um, quick question. So we um, have an action film that's already done as far as editing two hours of it, just like the first picture lock of it. But we still have special effects, sound, music, that stuff to do. Yeah, but we don't necessarily, yeah, yeah, we don't know the pricing for it per se, because the only thing right now we have is the editing done. Mm -hmm. So how could we submit that budget? This film was like a, a 100K in total, full feature. So would you want the new budget based on what we think the new post-production cost would be? Yeah, I mean, would it's you not, want the it's old not hard, budget as it's well? It's not difficult. So the question is, they've already got the movie in the can. They, 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 need, they need to go ahead and finish the, 
you need, you need to finish it. You have to, you, you have a lot of post needs to finish it. Yeah. And can we help with a project that's already underway like that? Absolutely we can. Um, but yeah, you, you need to have a budget that you've estimated by calling up these companies and saying, look, I have, you know, these three scenes are special effects scenes and I need sound done. And, you know, you basically getting your estimates, you know, together. Sorry. Yeah, it's your top, whatever companies you want to work with, get your estimates from them directly. You don't even have to tell them what your project is. Actually, if you're working with movie maker production services, we prefer that you don't call them and say, yeah, this is, this is my movie, this is who I am, you know, because they get in their heads that you're going to be paying them cash. And then when we call and say, hey, just kidding, you know, we need you to take advertising and editorial instead of profit, instead of taking all that money in cash. So, you know, so it takes away some of our negotiating ability if you've already disclosed what the project is and how much you have and all that. So yeah, you can call up anonymously and get, they'll, they'll be happy to give you rough quotes on, on what it would take to do that. Um, yeah, and we can come in at any time to help you as long as it's, you know, again, we need some lead time. So if you need it done, you know, in three weeks, I would say that's, that's really, that's a tall order for us. We have other, other, other projects we're working with, but if you have at least six weeks before you need that product or service, yeah, we can help. And post-production again is one of the areas that, that we are very successful in. There's a lot of post houses out there who have a lot of people working for them all the time. And they're, they're, there's, there's not always something for them to do. You know, so, you know, like, like Todd Ayo, like my, you know, my movie, I work with people nights and weekends at Todd Ayo, the top people, but nights and weekends. You know, they, they didn't, you know, I didn't, I wasn't able to work with those folks between nine and five, but that was okay. I didn't care. And just as a sort of an overall uh, answer, to, you know, uh, depending on, I know we're getting a lot of questions on like, when can I apply for MMPS? What, you know, do I have to be at a certain stage in my movie? And, um, you know, with that kind of thing, like you're in post-production, that's fine. But, it, it, you know, overall, as an answer to that question, if you just go to our website, if you go to MMPS, if you go to us on Film Freeway, you'll see my name, you'll see Caleb Hammond, our colleague, you'll see Tim's name. It'll have our email addresses up there. You can shoot us an email and say, hey, I'm in post-production on this project. I have, you know, six weeks, eight weeks. Uh, is that enough time? Is this stage appropriate for MMPS? And we'll get back to you. That's, you know, that's sort of just, that's the application process. If you're not, you know, before shooting, I want to apply on Film Freeway, that kind of thing. Anybody else? Right there. Well, sorry. Yeah, my name is Sanjay Gupta. So if I understand it right, so if I put in $50,000, then you guys double the money means like- Yeah, we, get, we, we double it based on value. So value, okay. you put in 50,000, then you'll have 100,000 in spending power. On the services. Yeah. Right, cool. Yeah, okay. so you have 100,000 and, and you say, you know, how do I know it's a hundred, how do I know that you're really getting me a hundred thousand dollars worth of value? And we tell you because you're the one who, you know, the rate card rates are what we base that on. So the post-production house, if you're working with the post house, th those are their rates if you're coming in off the street. So the fact that we worked with this, um, it was a Peter Fonda film we did uh, about two years ago. Um, and they had their, their uh, post estimate was $80,000 it was gonna cost them. They came in to, through Movie Maker. We, they had forty thousand to spend with us. And we got the whole deal done with them. Their, their whole eighty thousand dollars was done through through Tunnel Post through that deal um, for half of that. So that was that was a great deal for them. Yeah. Are you guys able to help with finding people like if a writer, director, music producer, or something like that? Music producers? No, not music producer, but just like a producer. So like if a writer, director needs a producer. Um, again, we had a similar question a little while ago, and it's not something that we say, yes, we do that for you. You know, no, no, we don't do that. But that ha having said that, you know, if you're in the program and you say, here's what I need, do you have any contacts for me? We may be able to direct you to someone. We've been doing this for 
almost 30 years long. I'm really old. So yeah, so yeah, we've met a lot of people. We've met a lot of people and we may be able to direct you to someone. We, we will if we can. Um, hi. Uh, hi. I'm uh, developing a project to be shot, at least partly in Switzerland. So do you have contacts? And for... Yeah, we've done several projects in Europe. Um, trying to think if we've done one in Switzerland. I can't remember. I don't, I don't, think, I don't think we have. We've been to Switzerland to the couple of festivals over there. I love Switzerland, but I don't think we've worked with a Swiss project directly. But if you don't need your, you know, post done in Switzerland, if you don't need that done, you know, we can help you here, even though it's being shot there. You know? Do you live here? Yes. yes. So you probably want to do your post here anyway. Probably, yeah. Unless... So what, what, what do you need done in Switzerland? Lodging? What do you need? Well, to shoot it, so everything, yeah. You, you need camera, grip and lighting, all that, all that stuff. Crew, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, I mean, Movie Maker used to be actually on newsstands in Switzerland. Yeah, but we, we were not anymore. But the good news is we our, our website, our web coverage is much larger than it used to be. So we can still pitch foreign companies and say, you know, having a banner on moviemaker.com is going to be really good for you. You know, there just has to be an angle for us to talk to them and say, you know, we're able to help promote your company. Through our through this resource, does that make sense to you? So, like you might even find a producer or a a, a producer that provides production services there. Yeah, they, this yeah, yeah it, that's totally possible and as then well. Yeah. What kind of deal? Then you take a percentage for that? Or? We don't take anything. We don't no. take any percentage. What do you get no. for that? No, we don't take anything. You know, and so movie make when you come into the program and you put your investment in. That's all you pay. That's it. What do you mean invest, investment? Yeah. You have to put money in first. Right? Yes, you have to put money in first. Yeah, it's an investment. Yeah, that's what that's what this is. Yeah, it's like an investment. Like so, a lot of times um, you'll go to your. You may not have the money to do this program, but you have an executive producer working with you, and you say, you know, I just found out about this program. This could stretch our budget, and I know you you never heard of it, and you didn't plan on doing this, but. Does this make sense to you? Maybe you should have a conversation with me and with the folks at Movie Maker and see if this makes sense. Because if we can do this, we can stretch our budget by 100% for the amount of money that we devote to this program. I'm sorry, I came in late. So to find out the minimum and the deal. Yeah, the minimum is $10,000, maximum is 150,000. And that's two Movie Maker to movie maker so that we can do the, yeah, it's an investment like for your project. So it, it works kind of like, you know, like a bank. Money comes into the program and we use that to make deals for a producer who might've come in six months ago, you know? But if you, you know, it, it, so it's revolving. We're, we're always working with producers whose projects are need to shoot now, you know? So if you come into the program, you guarantee your, slot in the program, even though you may not be shooting your movie for two years, but that's okay. We've had, we have people that have been in the program for two, three years already. They haven't done anything yet, but they're, they're still in touch with me. They're like, Hey Tim, um, we're still, I'm, I'm planning on shooting, you know, we're COVID delayed us by a year, you know, but I'm still going to shoot this planning on shooting this summer, this fall, you know, and I'm like, that's fine. You know, we're still here. We've been around for 30 years. We're not going anywhere. But that 10,000 is non-refundable, even if the movie doesn't- It is non-refundable, yeah. You put your money in, it's non-refundable. Well, what if- It's like if you buy a car, you know, or anything, anything else, you, know, you can't go back six months later and say, you know, I don't want this car anymore. You know, I want my money back. It's just, you know, it's something that you buy. So if, if you can't get contacts, I can't do it, it's just lost. It's lost, but it's not lost because we've well, never, we've never, we've never, no producers ever lost their investment through Movie Maker. But yeah, you can't call us up and say, you know what, I actually, I need that money back. It's, it doesn't really work like that. 
So it's a great program if you're sure you're going to make a movie. If you're sure you're going to make a movie within the next three years, by the way, this is a good incentive to, to finish your movie. <laughs> if you put 25 grand cash into this program because it's going to give you 50,000 in spending power, it's a great incentive to actually get the movie well, done. Hold on to it to inspire to, you. you know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an important, I mean, you're kind of putting your money where your dreams are, which is always, to me, it's always a good place to put it. You know, it helps, it helps make it a reality. It's a very straightforward, simple program on, on, you know, on its surface. It's really easy to understand. It's just unusual. You don't have companies usually doing this, um, but because we have the ability to do it and we've done it so many times, to us, it's a simple, you know, straightforward transaction with our producers. Anybody else? What vendors? A lot of company, a lot of PR companies we've worked with. Um, um, Jim Jim uh, Thompson at uh, Indie PR. Um, I'm Jim Dobson at Indie PR. Um, we've worked with him many times. Um, Chris uh, Krista Shirk, S C H E R C K. She's the one that got us got those two film fest, those two films. That I told you about in, uh, at Cinequest, she she was instrumental in getting them distribution because she worked directly with those. She drove up from LA to San Jose and worked with media at that festival before the festival was closed down for COVID. And so she was able to keep in touch with those those folks. She got radio interviews for those filmmakers. She got print, um, and so she was able to parlay that into distribution uh, deals for those filmmakers, they, they were able to parlay her work into distribution deals. Um, and we've worked with, again, I haven't owned Movie Maker in a couple of years. So some of these names are not at the top of my tongue, but we've worked with a number of PR agencies over the years. We work with PR agencies every single day. They come to us with their films and say, and they are asking us for editorial. And I still get the emails because Again, my name is Tim, and the new editor's name is Tim, and I, I still get all the emails. So, you know, every single day I'm forwarding these PR inquiries to the new editor. Um, so I know for a fact that, you know, we have a glut of PR people who want to work with Movie Maker. And um, us calling them and saying, you know, would you reduce your fees by 50% and, and would you take on this film? They'll say yes or no, um, but they're not going to hang up on us. You know, they they have a reason to discuss with us because they want something from us. They want us to promote films in their stable. You know? And if you email me, I can I can probably give you other names of PR folks we've worked with. My email is is super easy. It's Tim at MovieMaker.com. Um, and, and also. Um, Karen, who set this up, said that, uh, hi, Karen, that uh, so our hour is over, but we can stay a few minutes longer, right? And if anybody, um, this was originally supposed to be a pitch fest, which is usually one-on-one -on -one discussions with filmmakers about their projects. So if anybody wants to talk to us directly, I know it's hard in a room of this size to say, hey, here's what my movie is, and here's what it's all about, and what, you know, but if you want to um, meet with us one-on-one -on -one after this is over, um, and, and tell us, you know, a little bit about your project and, and um, you know, to follow up uh, before you email us, that's fine. We'll be here for a little while after this is over. And again, if you, if you just put in MMPS, Movie Maker Production Services, on, on Film Freeway, even if you're not looking for an application on Film Freeway, it'll have links to our website. Um, it'll have links to my email, Tim's email, Caleb Hammond's email, who uh, works on both we'll send, sides. We'll send you an application uh, directly. Yeah. Absolutely. So everyone feel free to gather and discuss. And okay, pitch. I guess that's it. That's all. Yeah, great. Um, and Thank you so much. Sure. Appreciate it. Thank you. Everyone, we do have the session at 3 p.m. with Black Magic Design um, with a few fantastic panelists. So make sure to be back for that.
Green seagull turned a deeper blue. 